I'm Chad, and you're watching Square Body Stuff. Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, this is the first video of the new year, 2025, and uh, got some cool stuff that's happened in between the last video and this video, other than Christmas and New Year's and all that stuff. We hit 25,000 subscribers, I think it was right before Christmas. Uh, so thank you for all of you out there that subscribe to this channel. And if you're not subscribed, hit that button. Let's see if we can get to 50,000 by the end of this year. And that'll be the biggest year at yet. I don't, I don't know where I was at, at the beginning of 2024. I didn't look it up to see. But anyhow, 25,000 subscribers. Can't thank you guys enough. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of my content isn't super exciting or entertaining. But mostly I just try to be informative and teach you guys some stuff. Maybe sometimes what not to do. All right, so today we're going to be working on the 454 again for Cream Puff, my 79, which he's out there chilling in the ice. Uh, we're having some winter weather come in. Uh, it's, yeah, eh, I'll show you. Let's just look outside. It's a winter wonderland. Tech's going to stay in here where it's nice and warm. It is icy and it's still coming down. That's Cream Puff. That's what this 44 is going in. If you're not familiar with the channel or familiar with the truck, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Actually, it's not as bad here as it is further north because uh, I'm in southern Missouri, south central Missouri, about 70 miles east of Springfield. So I know to the north of us, it's it's even worse than this. To the south, it's more rain. Uh, this kind of stuff, we usually end up losing power for a day or two. So yesterday, I spent all day getting generators ready, getting things kind of hopefully ready just in case we do lose power. We've got water for uh, flushing the toilet. We've got water for drinking because we're on a well. And uh, yeah, just got things set up. But today I've been spending some time out in the shop working on this 454. We're not going to be doing anything with the block today. We're going to be checking out the connecting rods, doing all the measuring and stuff on the connecting rods and the crankshaft to uh, check our tolerances on all that. If I get text to move out of my way, you know, you can go over there by the fire. It's a lot warmer, but you'd rather be right in my way, wouldn't you? You got a little drool hanging there. <laughs> Alright, well he's not going to move, so I'm just going to have to kind of work around him. So, what we've got going on is these are connecting rods. I've got two already on the crankshaft. I'll show you what I'm doing there. But what we've done is I've measured all of the big end of the rods, taken the measurements there, measured the small end, measured the wrist pins, and getting all the tolerances, measured the crankshaft, and I'm going to kind of break it down Try to be as simple and sweet about it as I can and show you what I do or my process on how to do all this. Are you comfortable? I hope so. Uh, so the first thing I did was measure the thickness of the rods, just to kind of pair them up. Uh, just use a micrometer, check the thickness, and then wrote them down on the rods because these rods were not paired up. Uh, they I got them, they were used, and uh, everything checks out good on them, so, but they weren't numbered, it's not, they didn't come off of this crankshaft, so I want to go through and kind of pair them up, make sure everything matches up. So I went ahead and measured the thickness, and we had those two, and these two were measured at 990, uh, then I had two of them were 991, and two of them 989, so pair those two up the 989 and 991s together to get the same thickness as the 990s when they're both together. Uh, that will come into play in a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to measure the side clearance, uh, but that'll be my last, kind of my last step. Next step is I put the bearings in and torque the rod bolts down. I'll show you real quick how I do that. I've, I've I've done it before. The last engine I built, I've, I've got a little vice over there, but I got so much crap piled up over there that uh, 
it's kind of a pain to bust. So let me show you how I was uh, clamping these to torque the rod bolts down. All right, so all I do to torque these down is just get some cardboard to kind of protect them and use my F clamp here. It's just a Harbor Freight F clamp. These things are actually really nice. Uh, just clamp it down, torque the bolts. Now these are Eagle rods with uh, 8740 ARP bolts. They're 7 sixteenths. The torque spec on these is 63 foot-pounds. Uh, if you're going to stretch them, these are, I think, right around 6,000 stretch. I haven't decided if I'm going to torque them or stretch them during final assembly. But for this, I just torque them to the 63 foot-pounds. And that actually comes out to about 3,000 stretch. I did check I did check one bolt just to, I was curious to see what the stretch was at 63 pounds and it was only 3,000 stretch. So I could actually torque them down a little bit more uh, and check the stretch. But that's for, that's for something, that's for final assembly. And once I have them all torqued down, then I'll set my dial bore gauge. If you don't have one of these, they're usually relatively cheap uh, through Amazon, eBay, um, about anywhere anymore you can find a cheap set. This is a cheap Chinese set that I've had for probably 20 years. Works really good. And I've got it set for, what do I have it set for? Uh, okay, I need to back up for a second. These, are, these rods, the journals on the rods have been turned 30 under. So I've got the appropriate 30 over bearings. So the factory measurement for the rod journal on a big block is uh, 2.2 so you subtract 30 you get 2.17 so that is what I've set my dial board gauge to with the micrometer just clamp it in the vise set your set your dial board gauge up and then I proceeded to go through and measure all the bearings write that down, number down on the and I, I write the numbers down on the rods That'd be uh, two, set, two, 172, and they all came out exactly the same. Uh, then I also transferred that to a notebook, and then I've also got the actual sheet, the blueprint sheet, whatever, that I put the final numbers down just in case there's any mix-up or errors on my part. Uh, so I actually write down the numbers three or four times by the time I end up getting everything done. So I found my how big my bearings are and then I went through and used a micrometer to measure each journal size or each journal on the crankshaft uh, pretty simple pretty standard stuff go through and measure I try to measure three or four different places on both sides of the rod journal that way you're not, you make sure it's not egg shaped or anything's wrong with the crankshaft now this one has already been checked out by the machine shop it's it's true and straight uh, not egg shaped and good and polished so uh, I measured everything on the crankshaft or all the rod journals on the crankshaft and then wrote that down then you do the math and when the math works out you get your clearance so let's talk about bearing clearance for a second uh, depending on the application of your build uh, there, there's a lot of different variables I guess but there's a rule of thumb that I've always went by is around one thousandth of clearance per inch of uh, journal size or the crank say the crankshaft is 220 just to make it eat nice and easy so you should have uh, a little over two thousandths bearing clearance but me personally I would rather have an engine a little bit loose uh, there's an old saying that a lot of guys used to say is loose is fast I'm not necessarily going fast with this engine but I would rather have a engine that has a little extra clearance. I'm running a high volume oil pump. Uh, it's not that loose of a clearance where it's going to cause any issues. Most of my big blocks I run around the same, you know, 3,000, two to three thousandths on my rods. Uh, the 454, 468 that's in my crew cab buddy. Uh, I think I built that engine 15, 20, 20 years ago maybe. And uh, I don't know if I've still got the paperwork on that engine but I did document everything and I think it was roughly the same thing around third or three thousandths on the clearance so and it runs just fine it has good oil pressure never had any problems with it so that is what I know about the bearing clearances 
and how we find the bearing clearance. Now the mains are pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna go over that in a, in a different video. Now these papers I printed off the internet a long time ago. This data sheets, that way you got uh, proof of, or, or documentation of what the clearances were. That way if I tear this engine down, you know, later on I can go back and measure everything. I know what it was to see what kind of wear we have. Let's show you the the rod bearing clearance. Of course, the bearing ID is 2172. The journal outside diameter is 21695. And you get a clearance of two and a half thousandths or 25 10 one thousandths, however you want to say it. Uh, if you'll notice, the, the last two journals were just a little bit smaller. So it gave us a five ten one thousandths of clearance or five uh, five or half a thousandths, however you want to say it. So now we know how much oil clearance we have on our big end of the rod. We need to find out, make sure we've got plenty of clearance for the right amount of clearance for a wrist pin. Now these are bushed pins. There's a bronze bushing in there and it's sized for these pins. Uh, now, I, my dial bore gauge doesn't fit, doesn't go small enough for that, so I have to use a set of snap gauges. I don't particularly like these, or they're kind of a cumbersome for me to you know, get just right to where I know I'll get a good reading. Uh, but it's better than calipers or any other way of measuring, I guess. Uh, I don't, I don't, it's not worth it to me buying and have another dial bore gauge just for this application. Uh, but I've measured the ID of the bushing and 99E1 and then I measured the pins and that comes out to uh, 9896 width and that gives us 14 10 one thousandths of clearance or just almost a thousandth and a half of clearance. So now the next measure we're going to take is the rod side clearance. Before I get to show you how I measure it uh, <laughs> rod side clearance is kind of another measurement that uh, it's all up to uh, your preferences. Uh, if you go on the internet to research it, you, you some, I, well, if you notice, I got some manuals out just because I'm just double checking, you know, what the numbers and measurements and tolerances are supposed to be from factory spec. Uh, only, the only book I've got right now that I found, I didn't go through every book I have, but out of three manuals, only one of them actually had the rod side clearance measurement. The motors manual didn't have it, the Chilton's did. So here's the deal with the rod side clearance. Uh, you could research it, I've researched it just, just to see what's out there. And you're better to be way loose than to be tight. Um, now the theory or some people say that if your side clearance is too loose, you lose too much oil and I I don't believe that because if you've got the proper amount of clearance to where they don't butt up and seize then your main your journal oiling what goes through your oil hole through your journal and oils the bearing there's only so much oil going through there so it doesn't matter how much side clearance you have uh, it's not, you don't you don't try to meter your oil with the side clearance of the rods. Uh, so anyway, that's that's about the best way I can explain. I hope that makes sense. Uh, your bearings only get so much oil; it's only gonna have so much pump through there. So don't worry about side clearance too much. You just got to make sure you've got enough. I don't like to go any tighter than like ten thousandths. Let me see. I can't remember what the book calls for. Let's just look here in the book. Okay, 454. There's the rod, the side clearance. You know, 13 to 23 thousandths. So yeah, I mean, for sure no less than 10 thousandths. That's like bare, bare minimum. Uh, I'd like to see him around over 15. But I'm gonna show you what I got on this engine. Now you can, there's a different ways you can measure this. 
uh, the good old tried and true method of feeler gauges. Uh, you get your rods on there. You don't necessarily have to torque them down. Just get the caps decent tight. You can torque them if you want to, but uh, that's just another torque sequence that you don't really need to be putting on the rod bolts. But you get your rods on there, and you just put the feeler gauge in there just until, until you get the right measurement. And this one is measuring about 30 to 31 thousandths with the feeler gauge. Now you can also use a dial indicator. Now I gotta make sure this is zeroed again. Now uh, we're at zero. I've got them pushed that way. If you push on it too much, I mean this is just on a wooden stand, so it's gonna have a little bit of give in it. So we're roughly zero. And slide it over. And just put a little bit of pressure on it. Right around 30, 31. So there's a couple ways you can check your rod side clearance and as I said this has got a little bit of a kind of excessive you could call it side clearance it's 30 31 thousandths not a big deal uh, yeah I'm not gonna go into all the different theories that some people talked about with a wider clearance yeah there's there's a lot into that look it up on the internet there's plenty of stuff to read on it I'm not gonna go through all of it but me personally I like I'd rather have a motor that's a little bit loose then be too tight because then you end up with heat problems uh seizing up issues like that so obviously you don't want to get too loose especially on your bearing clearances but side clearance don't worry about it and there's a spot on this paperwork to write that down so i've got thirty thousandths for number seven and eight and since these aren't numbered once i get this whole process done and then i'll number the rods and i don't like to stamp these uh, I've got a engraver. I'll engrave or etch the numbers into the rods. That way they stay with the journals that I'm putting them together with. And uh, that way I don't have any confusion. So, yeah, that's pretty much the easier, the simple breeze through. Maybe not so breeze through. I, can, I tend to drag things out, and I'm sorry, but that's just me. Uh, this step is going to be done. The only thing i got left to do is check all my rod side clearance, which that's not a... Not a real big deal. I've showed you guys how to do that. It's pretty simple stuff. And uh, yeah, get this end of it, part of it done. And then I'll start working on checking my main bearing clearance. That would be in the next video. Obviously there are other ways to get your measurements. You could use plastic gauge, uh, which it works. I've tested it out, I've tried it. I, I just prefer to use the correct tools to measure it. Uh, as far as the journal size and all that stuff, regular dial calipers or uh, digital calipers are not the best way you get a rough idea but they're not a real good way i would rather use plastic gauge than to use uh just regular calipers so if you're not familiar this is plastic gauge it's like a little wax string uh you put it in your in between your bearings you, you put the crank so you put the crankshaft in the in the main bearings and you put a little piece of this on there and you clamp the cap down and it'll squeeze it out and then it's got the measurements here to tell you what the clearance is i do have an older video on the difference between using plastic gauge stuff testing it out uh, so go look for that i'll try to remember to put it up in the corner but if not it's it's work it works better than calipers and by calipers i mean these guys these are these are great if you just want to get a real quick rough measurement now they are precision i guess but for measuring rod journals and the especially the bore it's uh not the best way to do it so if you have any comments or questions about what i've done in this video or whatever uh just send me a comment down below and i'll do my best to answer your questions i try to get to almost all of my comments and stuff try to answer them or at least acknowledge that i've seen them uh so with that I'm gonna get off here because we're starting to lose power. Yeah, the lights were flickering a little bit, so I'm gonna get things, try to get everything ra rounded up, squared away, so just in case it does go out. So thanks for watching. Until next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling. We'll catch you later.